Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. I've got another job for my buddy who I'm working for now at the heavy truck shop. And uh, what we have at the shop is a, uh, a truck with a Packard MX-13 engine in it. Now, as far as, uh, well, the truck needed a clutch. And so when we had the clutch out, we noticed that the rear main crankshaft seal is leaking oil. We need the special tool to install the new seal, but again, it's one of those things where new, the uh, special tools often cost quite a bit and take weeks to get. As far as this one's concerned, uh, what seems interesting is because there's a very large hole in the center of the crankshaft, like a big bore inside the bolt hole circle of where the flywheel bolts on, that um, I, what I'd like to do with this one is actually make a bit of a pilot to go in the center to make sure everything stays square and straight. So to, uh, to make the main body of it, I got a piece of one inch plate here that, uh, well, at work, I ran back to the shop and um, used the torch. Uh, torch this out of a piece of one inch plate that was in my stash. Uh, hit it with the grinder to try to knock some of the slaggy bits off, but it's still not going to be round. It's still going to be an interrupted cut to start with. Uh, it roughly eight inches across. The tool is roughly seven and a half inches across, so we got lots of material to play with. And I want to make the pilot out of this. It's a, I think it's a piece of sked something or other massive pipe. It's five inches across. Um, fairly thick wall. It's been, this is how I got it, so I don't know whether it was a solid bar before or whether it was, uh, whether it was pipe. So anyway, that's, that's what we're going to make the uh, pilot out of. Seal itself, it's a typical two-piece uh, orientation for like a heavy truck. Outer part here um, is wedged into the uh, rear main housing. Uh, center part here is, uh, well, this presses onto the crankshaft and the center part here actually turns, the outside stays put. Pretty straightforward. So when I try spinning this thing up, it shakes the lathe a little bit because, again, it's flame cut, it's not perfectly circular, I did it freehand. Um, it's, yeah, it just is what it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, center drill it and then uh, drill it out in a couple steps to get a, be able to get a decent sized boring bar in. There's our shake. There's a shake. All right. <clears throat> One inch drill bit. This is still kind of a mysterious metal to me. My suspicion is it's A36. Again, it's just part of a stack of stuff I got from a place that did a lot of pipeline and mechanical and that sort of stuff. None of the stuff I got was marked, so it's mysterium. There we go.
birds nesting notwithstanding, that actually came out quite nicely. Not bad. Okay, one thing I'm going to do right now is because we just shaved off a bunch of that mill scale, I'm going to, I see little flecks all over my ways here. I'm going to pause here for a minute and clean the ways. Okay, now that I got that cleaned up, I'm just going to put a quick chamfer on the inside of the hole. We'll watch for inch and three-eighths here. It needs to be 360 thou deep uh, to the shoulder. And that's what we'll watch here. I have this set to one inch, 360 thousandths. And so when this reads zero, that will be the back face. So yeah, here we go. See, it's not shaking that badly. I'll live. Yep. Three. I'm going to go to one inch, 350. There, that's the point of no return. Because what that does is that gives me a bit of, uh, a bit of material to do a final cleanup with. And I see we're going to have issues with bird's nests, aren't we? Not a horrible surface finish. Well, this is going to take a while. I'll bring you back in in a bit. Of course, it'll do that on the final pass. In a thousandth, 359. Take it. Six point five oh two. Having it a couple thousandths oversized is not going to hurt anything, especially seeing as I feel a little bit of warmth in it. So now the next step is I'm going to put the three jaw in. We'll flip it around and then we'll clean up the outside and face the other side. Well, I got it flipped around in the, uh, now it's in the three jaw from the inside and um, get, let it sit for a bit. It's now not as warm as it was. Now comes the fun part of taking this outside edge off. manually and then I'm going to be right quick with the uh, switch so it decides to go sideways. I did try to take the worst of it off with the grinder after cutting it with the torch. So 
So yeah, that's uh, pretty ugly on the outside, but it is coming along. I'll bring you back in when we're a little bit, a uh, little bit further in. two thousandths over I think we'll call that good and it's not a big deal for two thousandths over because yeah it's quite warm at the moment great so on the back side here we're right close to our um, to our jaws so we'll have to be careful of that when we take that burr off let's sneak in there with that Nice. Wow. Ah, I like that surface finish. That looks nice. I'll, if I do say so myself. All right. Chamfer that little hole in the center. Carefully. Is it right next to the jaws? Chamfer the outside. Yep, I like it. And it's a little warm to the touch at the moment, so... So there we go. That's the main body. Now time to make the little pilot that goes in the center. There we go. That looks nice. I like that. Okay. Uh, time to bore the center out. As I say, this dimension is not critical. I just want to make the inside look nicer. Okay. 
this part here is not critical, it just needs to look nicer. Well, it doesn't need to look nicer, but I want it to look nicer, which it does. I like that. I'm just going to pop this out, put the other jaws in. We're going to grab it from the center and do the outside. But one thing I didn't realize is uh, exactly where the uh, inner jaws are going to be uh, once this is set up. I'm going to only machine up until the last half inch or so, and then I'll, we'll flip it back around in order to do the front chamfer. Um, simply because the, uh, well, the taper or chamfer on the front is not really a critical uh, uh, a critical uh, dimension. This side has to be though because this is where this is what's going to uh, press into the other plate and the outside journal um, is going to be needing to be the diameter of the uh, inside of the back of the crankshaft. So although it is not the ideal situation uh, we'll make it work. does not like doing that. Yeah. <laughs> that could be why. Well, in an attempt to keep this video from going too long, I'm going to pause it here. Uh, we'll bring it back in part two and finish off the project. Um, again, thanks to everybody who wants to come by. Uh, thank you to those of you who've subscribed. If you haven't, you're just passing through. That's cool. Thanks for coming. So yeah, hopefully it's been interesting for you so far, and I hope to see you again in part two.